Would you like to avoid inflammatory diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or heart disease, even cancer? Well, then watch this segment. You're going to get a lot of great information and maybe even some things you could do to prevent these diseases. Recent research in the National Library of Medicine in September of 2023 highlighted the role of inflammation, particularly chronic low-grade inflammation, in the pathogenesis of coronary artery disease, heart disease, basically. In addition to inflammation that causes heart disease, there is many other diseases that have their beginning or their roots in inflammation, and these include rheumatoid arthritis, irritable bowel disease, COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, diabetes, and where the risk of inflammation, by the way, increases insulin resistance. Even Alzheimer's and cancer, which changes that microenvironment of the tissue, allows for disease, and especially in cancer, the more inflammation, the more propagation, the more invasion, and the more progression of the cancer, basically metastasis. Hi, I'm Dr. Mitch, Chief Medical Officer of Hue Light USA, and welcome to our Daily Dose. Now, please make sure you watch this video to the end, because I'll be giving you an important health tip that you can save you and your family from a lot of health issues. So stick with me. Inflammation is a necessary component to help the body heal. But when it becomes chronic, usually more than 30 days, it can cause changes at a cellular level that are deleterious to the human body and lends itself to the diseases that we just talked about a moment ago. Now, because of its prominence in so many disorders, it behooves you as the individual to make sure that inflammatory evaluation studies are done by your healthcare practitioner at least twice a year. That will demonstrate any ongoing inflammation that you might have. There was a study once that actually said that if your inflammation is there, you can't live to after 100. If you want to live to after 100, that is. And by the way, if you like our content, please subscribe and hit that bell below so that when new content comes out, you're notified right away. Let's talk about two simple easy blood test that you need to ask your physician or healthcare provider to do that twice a year. One is called an ESR. It stands for erythrocyte sedimentation rate. It's also known as a SED rate. It's a cheap uh, evaluation. If your doctor doesn't do it, you actually can walk into a lab and have it done for under $20 typically. And what it does, it, even though it's non-specific it will tell you if there's any inflammation in your body as a whole. Now, one other test, and then we'll compare the two, is called a C-reactive protein high sensitive. And this is a type of protein that comes from the liver that typically suggests that the inflammation, if elevated, is occurring within your vascular, in your arteries and your veins. So by taking both tests, you can get an idea if there's inflammation either in your circulation, which would lend itself more to heart disease, or elevations of sed rate in your body that lends itself to things like autoimmune disease, maybe kidney disease, perhaps cancer, and other things that we talked about. Now, as promised, your health tip today can make all the difference for you and your family. So I'm going to give you three things. One is to eat, one is about drink, and one is to take a supplement. I'm making it really easy for you. Now, there are many of different things, but let's start here. And in our next video, we'll talk about other things that you could do. But these imperative, if you could do this pretty much every day, you'll keep inflammation at an all-time low. Of course, the avoid. You've heard this before, this is nothing new, but avoid sugar, fried foods, processed foods. They definitely increase and initiate inflammation. Now, to drink, get yourself a green tea. Not the capsules, but the green tea itself 
and at least drink two glasses a day. If you look at different countries that drink green tea, they have much lower cancer rates. Now, the green tea that I like and what I drink every day is called matcha green tea. That's M-A-T-C-H-A green tea. And I use the Japanese organic ceremonial grade. That's the best. You have two ways that you could drink it. You can heat it, but the tip is never to heat it past 175 degrees or you'll fracture the protein in it. So keep it at 175 or less or drink it cold. It's tasty if you want to put a little raw honey into it to give it a little better taste. For those who don't like the taste of, you know, cut grass, so to speak, you might need to do that. And the only other thing that I could tell you right now is to take curcumin. Now, I take a thousand milligrams of a good curcumin and we can talk in the future about which ones do their best to maintain the blood level and pass the blood brain barrier. But I take a thousand milligrams in the morning and a thousand milligrams at bedtime. When you look at the studies and compare curcumin to most non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, the curcumin is as good and in larger than usual doses, often even better. And I get amazing results, not just of myself, my wife and family, but in my patients as well. I want to thank you again for watching The Daily Dose. I'm Dr. Mitch the Chief Medical Officer of Hue Light USA. More to come. For more of this type of content, please follow us or ring that bell below because we have so much interesting things coming more your way.